the next thing we're going to look at is uh, what information we can uh, glean from an image just from opening it. So to do this, I'm going to open the omx.dv file. Oops. There we go, just took a while. And I'm just going to rescale that so we can see. Okay, so in this, without even looking at the image, if we look at the header up in the up in the top of the image here, we can actually start to see a lot of information about what's contained within this data. So for example, we know that we've got two channels and we're currently sitting on channel one of two. We also know that this has Z stack information and it's got 54 Z slices and we're sitting on channel one. It tells us the physical dimensions of the image. So this is almost 41 by 41 microns and that's made up of 1024 by 1024 pixels. It's a 32-bit image, and the file size is 432 megabytes. Now if I open up another image for a contrast, so let's go with the six-color.czi. And let's just go with the normal image. So in this case, we've only got one set of parameters. So we've only got channels in this one. Uh, you can see in the bottom hand corner, we've got C, which represents channels, and we can scroll through our six different channels within this one image. So this is what we call a stack. It only has one parameter, so channels or time. The omx.dv image is what we call a hyperstack. So it has multi-parameters. So again, if you see at the bottom, we've got channels, which we know there are one of two, and we've also got z-stacks, so we know we've got 54 z-stacks as well. So if I scroll into the middle, you can start to see some of that data coming through from channel one, and then we can also flick over to channel two and look at some of that data as well in channel, channel two. Okay, um, Fiji has a lot of different parameters. Uh, sometimes it's very hard to find them, so if you look in some of the menus, there's sub-menus and then things go deeper and deeper. Um, you could spend a long time looking around trying to find all these. Uh, you should find, if you've downloaded the latest version, that there is a command finder. So if we want to know how to duplicate an image, we can type it in there. It will tell us a path to it. We can select the right one and then hit run. Uh, I mentioned earlier on, if you accidentally open up 100 images, rather than clicking through all of them, you can go to File, Close All, which is Control-Shift-W on, a, on a, a PC or Command-Shift-W on a Mac. Uh, the other thing we need to watch out for is what our image type is. So at the moment, we've got an image type. As I mentioned, our image is a 32-bit. Um, in some of the examples where we're playing around with color, when we're saving something that we want to use in Word or PowerPoint, we're probably going to need to convert that to an RGB color. So just remember your final step before you're saving, if you want to use it in Microsoft Office, you should save your images image type RGB color. Uh, one of the other tools we use quite a lot are stacks, which can be found under image stacks and this allows us to take something like this Z stack and convert that into individual images so again if you want to split out um, into individual Z stacks you can do that using that tool as well in terms of screen real estate um, so you notice I already re resized this image we're doing that just using the plus and minus buttons on the keyboard make things a bit smaller. Um, also, before you make any modifications to things, I normally recommend that you duplicate them. So um, make sure, Fiji always works on active windows, so make sure you've got the window you want active. And then you can go to Image and Duplicate, Control-Shift-D or Command-Shift-D, or again, you can right-click and duplicate on the image itself as well. 
let's just show you that comes up asking you to give it a file name uh, what do you do you want to duplicate the hyperstack or do you want to remove one of the channels etc